For the next about 15 minutes, I'll just give you a peek into the future. A future where technologies like the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, etc., have completely transformed the way that we live, work, and play. Right? Uh, so what we'll do, we'll quickly take a look at 10 different industries or areas, and just one or two ideas in each of these which, which are interesting. And uh, so there's going to be, you know, kind of rapid fire, which is very quickly going to go through all of these. Once again, a quick disclaimer before I start. Some of these technologies are very, very futuristic. So while there's a lot of R&D happening across the world on many of these, it might be a while before they actually see some kind of adoption. And when I say very, very futuristic, I mean what's coming out in the first half of 2017. OK? <coughs> OK, starting off. Flying cars. Yeah. So this is the Aeromobile. This is a car that has been in production uh, well, they've started production of it, and it's actually going to go on sale in 2017. So I was only half joking huh, about that whole 2017 thing. But it's very interesting. It's, you know, it's a car that goes on the road. If you see a traffic jack going up, why don't you just fly over it? Yeah? It solves all our problems. I think Bangalore needs this. Um, and the second thing is, of course, autonomous vehicles. So today, you know, all of us have seen and heard about autonomous vehicles. There's, you know, Google, Uber, everybody's working on this. But interestingly, as of last week, Singapore became the first country to have uh, self-driving cabs in the public domain, right? So it's already kind of reached that stage. So it's not even 2017. Next, we're looking at the future of energy. Uh, Tesla has got this power wall, and the idea behind it is you generate a lot of energy from, you know, at your home with the solar panels. You store all of them, and you use how much you need. The rest of it you feed back into the electricity grid. And if you're actually feeding energy back, then you also get paid for it. Now, that's nothing new. It's been there for quite some time. But the interesting thing is how uh, the technologies are improving, and so today energy harvesting is becoming a lot more efficient, as well as energy storage. So which means that, you know, user-generated energy will start to become a real viable source of revenue for a lot of people. And when I say user-generated user energy, I'm even talking about you're walking along the road and you're actually expending some energy. That energy is being harvested by some uh, device in your shoe, which actually stores it. Or you're driving a car, the car is dissipating a lot of heat, yeah, but then you can actually kind of harvest some of that energy from the engine and then store it all. Now, what will you do with all of this energy? Hopefully, you'll start to push it back into one central location, right? So that you can then later use that same energy. So what we're basically talking about is you've, you've heard of data clouds, where all your data goes and sits in the cloud. Tomorrow, you can have power clouds, where the energy that you're generating or the energy that you're harvesting, these small, small trickles, all come together to become a really much larger stream of energy that you will store on your power cloud. Yeah? So that could be the future of energy. And what happens with you know, some of those energy things? Now, if you're going to be kind of selling that back to uh, the utility companies, you get paid for it. So really, what we're talking about is energy now becoming a form of currency. And this, you know, this, this is what is happening now. Currency, there are new types of currencies coming about. Bitcoin was one such example. And uh, it may or may not work. But uh, with, with energy, you could say that energy is now the new currency. And you know, how much does a t-shirt cost? Two joules. Yeah? So it could go that way. Or you could look at, as you know, processing power is becoming very important now. You know, for a lot of new applications, you need heavy duty processing power. So can processing power become the new currency? Can you look at how many uh, cycles of uh, processing that you can pay for something? So that's a new way of looking at uh, the economy itself. The other part, of course, what's happening is, many of you have seen crowdfunding and peer-to-peer -peer lending have become such massive forces. The amount of money raised for crowdfunding has made so many new products and innovations possible. Uh, it is likely that we will be trying to cut out the middlemen such as banks and all that going forward, unless they improve and become more of a marketplace. Uh, the future of industry. <laughs> Very interesting stuff happening in this space. Now, typically what happens in this long assembly line, if there is a breakdown in one machine, it means that the entire assembly line comes to a halt. A halt in the assembly line means no production, which means lost revenues. So what is happening? But if you look at machines, they behave in a very certain way before they break down. Right? Either they start to sound different, or they start to overheat, or you start to see that you know, the vibrations are uh, a lot more. So these are all indicators that sensors can pick up very easily. And uh, it can actually tell you that this machine is likely going to break down in the next two to three days. And once you have that information, what you can do is instead of waiting for the machine to break down, the manager of that uh, factory can actually, after work hours, call in the mechanic who will fix it, which means that machine will never break down. This is called predictive maintenance. Before something breaks down, you actually go there, you know there's no breakdown, so you fix it. So 
that is something that is uh, that's made possible with the entire industry 4.0 that is coming up. And uh, the other part of it is, of course, machines building machines. Now, that's what you see here. Of course, robots have been building cars for the longest time. But will robots build smarter and better versions of themselves? Right? So that way, you're gonna, the robot knows where it's lacking, and then it actually starts to build a better version of itself. That's kind of where it's going as well. And this is what is you know, 3D printing and all these making it possible. Um, future of agriculture, very interesting. Show of hands, how many of you eat food? OK, good, most of you. Uh, okay, so with agriculture, now what happens is you have limited amount of space and you can grow crops in that space. But what if you want to increase the productivity of that land, right? How about having layers? So this is vertical farming. If you, if you want to increase it, you know, 10x, you add that many more layers and suddenly you're able to grow all of these crops in that same uh, piece of land. But even here, what is interesting is if you have um, uh, all of these, you know, this vertical farming all happens largely indoors in very controlled environments. So think of it as a greenhouse where you can control the temperature, you can control the amount of light, you can control the amount of moisture or humidity, all of those things. So then what is going to happen is, uh, and you know, because all of these are controlled by systems, basically they are now controlled by the software or software defined farming as it's called. How that works is, uh, let's say you have planted a particular variety of carrots, right, seeds. And you just tell the system that this is the variety of carrots that we've put in. Now the system knows what is the optimal growth condition for these carrots. So it will automatically maintain the light, the temperature, and you know the moisture, putting in water, at what time, all of those things it will take care of. And then you'll get you know, the best growth. But tomorrow if you say, I don't want to grow these carrots anymore, I want to grow you know, pepper. You just plant the pepper seeds and you update the software to say, I'm now growing pepper. And the system is smart enough to say, okay, if it's pepper, then it requires these conditions and it will automatically switch everything, right? So now, so the software is controlling all of this. Now, if you think about where this can go, a company like Monsanto that is probably selling seeds, tomorrow will sell seeds along with a software package for those seeds, yeah? So, uh, and then, you know, they will have new revenue models because they'll start to sell subscriptions to the software. So they're going to keep doing a lot of research on the software and they will keep upgrading it. So the way that you buy your antivirus, farmers will probably be buying, uh, uh, you know, anti-pest crops, anti-pest software, basically, right? Um, for those of you who like cooking, bad news, it looks like robots are going to take over our kitchens. Uh, those of you who don't like to wash vessels, good news, because robots are going to take over our kitchens. Um, so here, this is something called Molly. This actually exists. What it does is you can kind of tell it what you want and it will cook all of that stuff for you. Uh, the interesting part here is once again, you know, you can connect this up to the internet and so it can just download uh, recipes from it and so it keeps improving, it keeps becoming smarter, it knows your preference, if you like food cooked a certain way with certain amount of spice, it can do all of that stuff for you. That's also the personalization that's uh, coming in, right? Uh, animal lovers, good news again for you guys, 3D printed meat is happening, it, uh, it's supposed to be very realistic. Uh, it's very nutritious and there is no cruelty to animals there. The future of sports. We have some very interesting things happening here. What you see on screen is basically, this is basically your uh, uh, US versus Japan. They have these big fighting bots and they're going to set them off against each other. Yeah? So, but that is essentially where sports is going. You will have machine against machine sports as opposed to human versus human what we're doing now. Right? So obviously all of this is already happening. We've had robot wars, we've had drone races, but there what's happening is there are still humans who are piloting all of these machines. Right? But as artificial intelligence improves, you will have these machines that are smart and that are learning and that are observing their opponents and reacting accordingly. So it makes for very interesting sports. Now the same thing, you know, as audience then, how do the humans enjoy it, right? So you'll have more immersive experiences for the audience as well. Uh, the audience will have, you know, your virtual reality kits, so that they can get, let's say that you're seeing a drone race, you can actually switch to the drone's point of view and see how it is flying, where, where it's flying through, as it's overtaking another drone, you can start to see all of those. So more immersive experiences, including connected stadiums, all of these are on the cards for us. Clothes, so, um, how many of you wear clothes? <laughs> Most of you, so not, not all. Okay. Uh, but the idea here with clothes is that today you have a cupboard. Tomorrow basically what is going to happen is you will have a 3D printer and an internet connection. That is going to be your new cupboard, right? Because you can actually store your, you know, your uh, measurements in the system and then the system will actually pick out some nice designs for you from the internet and print it out as you get ready, right? So you go take a shower and your shirt will be ready by the time you come out. 
so that's kind of the future of clothes. That's where it's going. And this is, you know, it's not just you know putting some design on the clothes, but it's actually weaving the clothes in real time. Uh, so a lot of interesting things happening there as well. And of course, we've had you know functional clothing. Uh, some of you might have seen that India has recently seen the launch of a smart shirt in the markets. Uh, it will basically it's got some electronics here on the cuff, and it can measure stress level and things like that. So the question also becomes, how do these two things combine? So if you're 3D printing clothes, how do you also get the 3D printer to integrate electronics into it? Uh, very interesting space and you know, something to be worked at. Now, of course, healthcare. Healthcare, once again, so many things are happening in this entire space. Implantables. Why you just wear something that will measure your you know, vitals when you can actually implant it into your body? So which means that, say, someone who is uh, suffering from diabetes, they don't necessarily have to keep taking blood samples out of their body to test each time because there'll be a chip inside which is just streaming that information to your phone. So anytime that you want to see your blood sugar level, just you know, open up the app and see it. Um, and this is a way of you know, kind of monitoring and maybe it can do some kind of control. But what's even more interesting is gene editing. Right? You can actually, if there are inherited diseases that you have or that you're at a risk of, uh, you know, of it uh, getting activated, what you can do is go and edit those genes the same way that you did it a computer program and remove the bugs. Right? So now we're fixing bugs in the human body. <laughs> and finally, space, the final frontier. Uh, once again, you've all heard of what Elon Musk is looking at and what he's trying to do. Going to Mars and let's terraform Mars. Terraforming is basically kind of changing the surface to suit uh, you know, human habitation. We should be able to grow our food. We should get air to breathe, all of those kinds of things. Uh, space, you know, with, with all of the space exploration happening, there are so many things happening. The International Space Station has now started to sell parking space there so that if you're going to come there, you can actually dock. Uh, tickets are being sold for 2025 to go and visit different planets. So space tourism is becoming such a such a massive thing. So tomorrow, if you're you know today, if you're thinking about should I go to you know Australia, or should I go to the U.S. Tomorrow, you'll also think, or should I just go to the Sea of Tranquility, which is on the moon, right? So space tourism is also coming up. A lot of very interesting things happening in that space. So let's just uh, quickly look at what is the future of humanity with all of this technology coming in, right? Once you start connecting a device, once you start building intelligence into these machines. Uh, there is a question of who will become the dominant species? Is it machine or is it going to be a human or is it going to be a combination, right? And that whole combination where humans and machines converge and combine is what is called the technological singularity. We don't really know what will happen post that, but that is one of several possibilities that could happen. Now even then if you look at it, there are two ways that it can happen, right? Either we as humans absorb machines, which is we get implantables, we get smart prosthetics, all of those. Or the machines absorb the humans, which means that we're uploading our mind or our brain into the machine. Now, once again, it's not very clear. Is it uploading your brain or is it your mind or is it your consciousness or is it your personality? But whatever it is, the intelligence, what makes us human if that gets uploaded into a machine, right? It's a very interesting concept. I personally prefer this second method where you know we're kind of getting absorbed into those machines because it makes a lot of these futuristic science fiction type things possible. So take for example teleportation. Now I have a body here and I have a machine here and I'm able to upload, right? And across the stage I have another machine where I will download that entire consciousness into another body. What that is is basically teleportation, right? Now this machine doesn't need to be here. It can once again be in the US. So now I'm able to teleport from one place to another without essentially destroying my body because I can go there and then I can come back and download it into my body itself. Uh, so teleportation is possible. Now if that end pod is not in the US but it's on Mars, then what happens is I can actually transfer my body to Mars or I can transfer my consciousness to Mars down to the body there which does not require oxygen or does not, you know, which can actually withstand the temperatures of Mars. So now space travel suddenly has become a possibility. Um, and then, of course, once if I'm able to kind of upload my brain somewhere and then download it into another body, what you're looking at is uh, I will download my brain into three different bodies, which means I'm now cloning, right? So one of me is going to be at work, one of me is going to be at home, and another me is going to be at vacation. And then at the end of the day, I just combine all of these back into one memory, right? So you're looking at cloning. Uh, 
immortality because you can just keep shifting bodies anytime that a body goes down no problem just switch it into a new body it's like your phone and all the data that's on your phone it's just like that with the human body as well so so many of these you know really interesting things are happening you can even make a case for time travel about you know going towards a black hole and then coming back and you are probably in the future by then uh, so a lot of interesting things that could be possible now the only the only thing here is we would love for all of this to happen, but human beings are not yet tracked being able to upload their brain or their personality to a machine or to the internet for that matter, right? But if you think about it for machines, maybe we're going to get there a lot faster. Today, the way that we're building machines is that, you know, the software sits separate from the hardware and the software can actually be downloaded into uh, different hardware. So that means the machines can actually do all of these things that I just talked about, immortality, cloning, space travel, teleportation, all of these machines can do before us. So will they become the more dominant species? Only time will tell, but it looks like 2017 is going to be a very interesting year. Thank you all.